Warning, this game contains content might not be suitable for most audiences. Viewer's discretion is advised. Hello everyone and welcome back to Something's Wrong with Sunday Jack. So today we are going to be going down an alternate route where I'm basically going to be rude to Jack. Well, not really rude. I'm just going to be like ignoring his advances. Uh, I will be skipping out the scenes, which I've already seen. And then right after that, we are going to be going down the audio tracks as well as the afterlife segment with Ian. So anyway, let's get back into it, shall we? All right. First thing we're going to do is we're not going to kiss Jack. I don't want to make it weird, Jack. I suddenly don't want to do anything but to be with his warmth. I fall against him, clinging to his shirt, under his vest. He chuckles as I exhale deeply, a mind drifting into this blissful state of existence. Why does this remind me of something so intimate? Part of me feels like I'm inches away from touching his heart with mine. Do hours pass? Do days? I can see the sunlight through my eyes. All I know is everything feels golden and pure. I could stay like this forever. How did I come to know Jack again? It's so odd when I lay it all out. This hallucination of mine is holding me, making me feel so good. It can't not be real, right? If it wasn't, I think I might have cried. I wanted him to be there, to be real. I wanted him so bad. You know, there are lots of ways to stay with someone forever, don't you? What? Huh? I never have to leave if you don't want me to. And if you didn't want me to, I don't think I'd ever go. I want to open my eyes to assess the situation. Maybe read his face, but I don't. You make me feel something special. You make me feel... love. My dude, I, I literally just said that I did not want to make this weird. Like, what the frick, Jack? But yeah, sure, thanks. His embrace grows not tighter, but more resolved. Possessive, even. I feel the gold of my fuzzy mind fade into something grayer, colder. Almost more distant. My first instinct is to seek him out again. They won't understand it, but they don't need to. The world is so busy, they'll forget all about you. I never want that for you. That is a very... I don't know, that's an incredibly pessimistic way of looking at things, sunny day Jack. I finally opened my eyes. So I won't. He won't what? I won't ever forget you. I'll never leave you, okay? And in return, please don't forget about me. I won't, I won't. He smiles, but it's so sad. Maybe even desperate. I shake my head. I won't. I won't forget about you. I promise. This seems to put him at ease. I rest myself in his arms once more. But the way he holds me is ginger. It's like he's afraid I'll crumble to dust or break. Ah, goddammit, that must be Barry. Okay, so surprisingly, even if you don't kiss him at the start, like, Jack still, like, pressures you into, like, trying to say that you like him or something like that on your first day of work. I'm gonna see what happens if you do his yogurt right and see whether there's a difference with, like, the price he gives you. Because it will be really weird if he kisses me at this point because I don't like him like that here. Hey, that looks pretty good. You're quite the chef, huh? I told you, I am the yogurt god. <laughs> I believe you, sunshine. Don't worry. Jack spoons around the concoction. He's very careful to keep it in the bowl. All right, I trust you. Let's see how you did. He takes a bite. He seems to roll the yogurt over his tongue thoughtfully. His eyes light up. We're gonna skip to see what the prize is. Oh, I told you not to fuss. Don't worry, we can fix this. Sit still, okay? I stay still. A warm kit. Why is he kissing me? Because here's the thing, like, I chose not to, like, I chose not to make it weird at the start. Like, him kissing me here just feels really freaking weird. I know it's a dating sim, but still. Like, if you choose not to go down this route, he still forces himself? That's uh, a little weird. <laughs> so now we're at the point where he asks us to, like, tell Nick that, yes, we are taken. I am going to say no and see where this takes us. No, no, this isn't how it needs to come out. Not like this. No, but I'm not really looking for that right now anyways. <laughs> oh, man. That sucks. Wait, what? He hangs his head a little and just walks off. I mean, I don't know what he was expecting. 
it's a Nick! I turned to Jack. I... I see. <laughs> oh, God. That's what you get for trying to kiss me when I don't like you! God! An awkward silence hangs in the air. A mild chill slowly creeps in. I'm sorry. I don't know what got into me. <laughs> he seems to wilt, looking crestfallen, but doing his best to hide it. Jack, I... You, you know I didn't... Oh, no. I didn't push that on you, did I? You kinda did! I didn't mean to. Really, I really thought... He furrows his brows, like he's retracing his, his steps, blaming, blaming himself, trying to see where it all went wrong. I reach out to touch him. Jack, I... My hand falls through. Wait, what? Alright, strange. I try again. My hand melts through his colorful image like it's passing through a cloud or smoke. No. Oh, it doesn't even seem to disturb his presence even. I try for a third time to grab him, touch him, connect, but he pulls away, almost flinching. I, oh, of course it will feel weird. He's usually in me. I'm inside him now. <laughs> oh, God. Jack? Wait, what's going on? He coughs and stammers over his words. I, <laughs> well, I... Jack, why can't I, you know... I'm your friend, right? And you know that you're very special to me. But because I'm your friend, there are certain things I can't do. Things I don't want to. Okay. And that's anything you don't want. Alright, but what does that have to do with you disappearing? No, 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 I'm not disappearing. Promise, really. If you don't want me, well, this is what happens. Wait, what? But it's okay. I'm fine. I'm still here. See? I'm not going anywhere. Is he really trying to reassure me? Now of all times. Jack, please. No, I didn't mean it. I pawed him once more, but it steps away from me. Hey, hey. Shh. It's okay, all right? Don't worry. This isn't funny. I'm being serious. I know you are. But you really, really have to mean it. That's just something I can't do on my own. Damn it, Jack! I didn't mean for this to happen. If I'd known it was gonna happen, I would've said yes. It's so cold now. I can't help but attribute that to him being gone. But I feel so alone. Why is he here, but I feel like he's not? Please. Jack, I want you. And just like that, I feel two strong arms wrap around me in a warm embrace. It's so safe and sturdy and comforting. A wave of relief washes over me as I cling to him for dear life. I'm sorry. I don't know whether to stop or swear, but however it comes out, he simply holds on tighter. I know. No, he doesn't. No, I really want you. I mean it. Don't ever do that again. Like I said, I never have to go if you don't want me to. I'll be here as long as you need me. Okay? Just remember what you promised me. Don't forget me. I don't have the energy to reply after that. I feel drained, tired. I don't say it, but I hope somehow he can tell. I never planned to. Ever. That was close. What? Too close. <laughs> I thought I was doing everything right. Wasn't this all what you wanted? Or was I meant to be giving you more? I can do better. I will do better. You'll see how good I am for you. I can make you whole. You've just got to trust me. I get home around 7 at night. The days saw a little fanfare overall, but I had to do all of Carol's usual chores. Those took a little longer than I expected because she never does them to begin with. I'm dead tired when I get in through the door. Oh god, I want to die. Is it too late to die now? I'm ready for death! I flop onto the couch with a little hesitation or regard for the mess that makes up my body. I'm afraid I can't let you do that. Wait, what? What I'm not ready for is when he actually does yet another thing I had no idea he could do. He scoops me up into his arms and holds me. Bridal style and all. Yeah, wait a second! Is this all the same? 
Is this all the same interactions? So basically, even if you tell Jack that you are not into him and you do most of what you could to tell him no, like, he still screws you in the demo and... Huh. Not sure how to feel about that. Hey there, line from the future. So, another thing which I want you to do before we get to the afterlife segment is that I want to see what happens if we use the worst combination of yogurt for Jack. So, apparently the worst combination is cafe latte. Something nice and refined. It's popular with soccer moms looking to pretend they're still on that diet they told all their friends about. Let's go with that. All right, yogurt is picked out. Now we have to pick a sauce. Uh, rum sauce. Blech. Where do you even get this stuff from? Remind me to junk it later. But it's got a nice and classy name. And the bottle is extra fancy. We never actually sell alcoholic anything here. So this is probably like rum raisin ice cream or something. Let's see where this goes. All right. All that's left are the toppings. Gotta make this count. Uh, apparently we're supposed to add nuts to this. Not so weird. They go great with sweet and savory things because they're salty, but cashews are especially weird. Ian used to eat them on pizzas, if I recall correctly. <laughs> Can I just say, it looks like a chunky turd. What in the world? <laughs> oh, well, this will make for a nice crunch. All right, there we go. One yogurt cup filled to the brim with tasty toppings and cream. All right, there we go. One yogurt cup filled to the brim with tasty toppings and cream. Finished! I call back to Jack, who pops around inquisitively. Hey, that looks pretty good. You're quite the chef, huh? It's funny how he's saying this now when we know for a fact that this is the worst possible combination to give to Jack. And I told you, I am a yogurt god, and I command thee to die! I believe you, sunshine. Don't worry. Jack spoons around the concoction. He's very careful to keep it in the bowl. All right, I trust you. Let's see how you did. Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> That's what you get, Jack! He takes a bite and immediately seems to freeze. Not in a good way. In a looks like he's about to vomit way. <laughs> Can ghosts even vomit? Did he spit it out? He actually spat it out! Very delicately, he removes the spoon from his mouth and sets the cup down. Jack? He turns away without looking at me. Jack! I'm sorry, was it that bad? He looks pale, almost haunted, terrified of something. Jack? Yeah, you're not that person anymore. What? What? Jack, are you okay? You're better than that now. Huh. You can be whatever you want to be. But nobody has to know. You're clean now. You're clean? Jack, are you okay? Jack, what are you talking about? Uh, nothing. That doesn't sound like nothing. N nothing at all, Sunspot. I'm fine and dandy lemon candy. Okay, that is fascinating. Cause like, okay, uh, this is an important time where I've actually read up on a bit more Sunny Day Jack lore. And I know that he was a very troubled teenager like way back in the day. Like, thank you, like, thank you Martina in particular for like letting me know about this interaction. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like keep this in mind for when I actually like write up the theory video on this. Peachy Keen Jelly Bean. You don't seem jelly Peachy Keen Jelly Bean. I mean, I know you're trained to do this, Jack. I just... Wow, that's a lot of flavors. <laughs> uh, I love putting you through pain. He seems like he wants to move on. I don't know what I did, but I wish I hadn't done it. I take care I don't get the prize then. Hmm, not this time, but there's always a next time, right? Well, yeah, there is always a next time. Anyway, yeah, we should definitely head over to the afterlife segment with Ian, as well as the audio tracks. And yes, I did add subtitles to them, so look forward to that. May 25th, 2000 and something. 
I was on box number 15, and thank god I was, because I was just about to lose all hope. The move had been spotty, yeah. Somewhere in our youthful naivety, Ian and I had decided it was no longer necessary to each own a separate car. It'll save us on gas, we said. It'll be a shared baby, we said. It'll mean less insurance bills, we said. When push came to shove, eh, we needed this car to pull through now more than ever. It didn't have enough trunk space to fit even half of Ian's things in it. Fast forward five trips to and from the college, boxing up my things and driving them to a new apartment, and then doing the same for all his. That was horrible, and we both agreed to never do it ever again. But 15 boxes into unpacking all of that, the driving back and forth was beginning to feel like the easy part. I stank, like I could feel a moss-like aura around me. I was so sweaty, I was feeling flashbacks to my day on my 5th grade PE teacher had to take me aside and teach me what deodorant was. My knees were sore, and my legs were numb. The carpet had taken to imprinting its woven texture into my flesh. I'd been down there for so long. I honestly pro probably could have really used a break and a shower, but having everything in such disarray was keeping me from being able to relax. Bubble wrap and tape and boxes torn into pieces or kicked in for funsies. And somewhere in this mess, there was a box cutter on the floor. But I had no idea where it was at this point, so that was just going to have to be a fun surprise to find later. I didn't think it was possible to be so tired and sickly and stuffy and ready to explode. I needed some breathing room. I needed just a little space. Hey, pizza's here. Oh, thank God! That's probably the only good thing I'm getting out of this playthrough, pizza! I don't think I'd ever been so quick in my life standing up. If I moved like that in high school, I definitely would've made track for sure. Yes, yes! Oh God, it's about time. Easy now, it's still hot. Because who has two thumbs and got there just in time for them to run out? So then they had to go make an entirely new fresh one just for him. <laughs> uh, is it you? This guy. You freaking dork. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, right. So seriously, be careful. The cheese is really hot. Plates are in the bag. Ian sets down a big box of pizza that's already grease soaked enough to feel like the heavy disc of cheese and solids inside will fall through the bottom at any second. Oh, frick yeah! I was literally about to eat my shirt! I open the box and a wave of heat and cheese smell floods outwards. It's golden and glorious. Don't you think we're like a bit old to be eating cheese pizza still? Who's too old to be eating cheese pizzas? I freaking love cheese pizza! Ian grabs a slice after I do, and we both begin to race to see who can down the most molten grease the fastest. I feel like maybe we should be past this phase. What about trying a combination pizza next time? Okay, but with all those toppings on top, you don't want- you don't get the baked cheese top. Right, right. Almost as if to demonstrate my point about the superiority of the cheese pizza, it takes a long, stringy bite that stretches what looks to be half a foot long. And it's in that moment that I can't help but think. There's really no place I'd rather be. Growing up, there weren't too many options for best friends. For one reason or another, the flighty and unfocused minds of toddlers who'd shown up to Mrs. Grigham's first great class didn't seem too interested in developing deep, meaningful friendships. The only one who seemed to want a friend was a kid who never seemed to have any. That was Ian. Ian wasn't particularly loud, and he didn't have cool clothes or toys. He just kind of faded into the background. A lot of kids made fun of him. In the end, that only made him an even better friend once he got to know him. He was a nerd, and he was silly, and he was very apologetically himself, but what we had was special. And it still is. Here we are, years and years down the line. Getting an apartment together, going to college together. I could spend the rest of my life like this. Are you alright? I snap out my blissful trance. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm alright. You're totally spacing on me. Is, is everything okay? No, of course, of course. No, I was just thinking about how nice it's all going to be. You really think so? 
I know so. You aren't regretting this. Uh, I don't know if it's just me, but I, I wasn't expecting that. If you change your mind later, I won't be upset. But I, I, I really hope that this isn't uh, too weird. Why would it be weird? We're a thing, right? Like, a couple? No need since we were still wetting the bed. Hey, that's not even fair. You know, I just have a really small bladder. My point is, nothing you could do would be weird. And I'm hoping nothing I could do would be weird either. Ian pauses and gives a downcast glance at the floor. Well, it, isn't it... Ah, enough with your Christian sensibilities, like, for the love of God, like, Ian, chill, relax. I'm gonna give you the gobble gobble 9000 of your life. Sinful? Why would this be sinful? I, I just worry, okay? Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm being paranoid. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Ian. His face doesn't fall. It falls through the floor. My mom called me. Someone gave her our address. Or she might have had one of her friends watching. I don't know. She, she said... She says that to live with someone out of wedlock, it, it's a sin. And I'm going to hell. Ian, Ian, listen, listen! Like, we're all, like, we, hell is where the good people are at, okay? That's where all the fun people are at, okay? Like, come on! What's what's wrong with having a few drinks of the devil, okay? You're having drinks of me tonight. She said I'm only doing it to, to satisfy uh, my, my manhood. And? You got a problem with that? I mean, I satisfy your manhood all the time. I, I, I'm not taking advantage of you by doing this, am I? Normally, under any other circumstances, I tell someone what they wanted to hear. But I know Ian. So I cut out the middleman and just hold him. I hold on to him tight. Like, he's gonna run away or melt or fall if I don't. Mm-hmm. He holds me back after a while. want this too? Well, I did, but you leave later on, so like... I know she's just being mean, but I love you. I just need to hear you say it. I love you, Ian, and if I didn't love you, I wouldn't be here. It clings to me even more. Ian has a bit of a cry, but after that, we block his mother's phone number and move on. We have as much pizza as we can stop up, but after a while, the delicious savior-like qualities of pizza are turned into dairy overload, and we call it quits. Alright, All so- Alright, oh. so we've done most of the unpacking out here, and that's just about it, right? Should be, so I did find one other box of yours mixed in. Another one? I don't remember having any others. My room is pretty much set up now and nothing seems missing. Ah, uh, well it was in your dorm, so it's gotta be yours. I bring Ian uh, to a small box sitting among the refuse and remains on my unpacking spree. Kneeling down, Ian pulls the strip of tape sealing the box shut away and open it up. Oh, uh, right. Okay, I know what this is. <laughs> this is Momonga. Damn. And I just got my shelves all situated, too. <laughs> Ian flips through a few of them. There are mixed of matte covers with doggy ear quarters and glossy, almost laminated covers that look brand new. It will be nice to put all these out in the open. No more hiding. My little victory dance, you know? This is our home. Nobody can tell us what to do anymore. He was right. He'd had to keep that stuff with me or read it in the library before. 
Dirty picture books, his mom called them. But now he was finally free to enjoy all that stuff. Ian placed the books back into the box and closed it up again. Come on. Let's go christen my room with these bad boys. Is that the only thing we'll be christening your room with? Or, or girls. Girls? I stifle a chuckle as Ian heaves and holds the box upwards, and we make a single foul line trek to his room. Oh, nice. Ian sets the box down on his bed and begins unloading it in brick-like stacks. Austere challenger tribulation is an A, so that'll be easy. Solution of the reckless is on a pretty full shelf, though. That's the S's. I'll have to move the entire shelf one down. He thoughtfully studies his bookshelf with the intensity of an archaeologist studying hieroglyphics. I sit there and look at the pretty pictures in the books. There's a few nice ones and a few that I'm not too interested in. A lot of these dates so far back, I'm getting flashbacks. Glomping yaoi paddles. <laughs> Those cookie sticks that you bought because they were cute to take pics with even though they weren't all that satisfying. I had to stop myself from visibly cringing when one of the books mentions those felt cat ear hats everyone in school had to have at some point. I continue to pick through as he carefully splices each edition into his collection. Huh. Honey Trumpet. I fish out a book featuring a tall, handsome boy with glasses. He's not muscle bound and he's kind of a beanpole, but from my experience, that's what constitutes as attractive, unattractive in these. He's holding onto what I can only assume is a blushing love interest in tight clothing. I jump right into the middle of the... Oh, wow! And what's our dirty stuff have you been reading? Hey. Hey, you alright? I know, I know. It's, it's a real mixed bag. I just kind of grabbed what I could. They're sentimental to me. Except that one. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? Before I knew it, the book is gone. Ian is clutching the book in his arms, looking red as a tomato. Is that... Is that hentai? It's... It's, it's not porn. Technically, it's etchy. And... And you weren't supposed to see that. Shit. This is what I was talking about. I... I, I didn't mean... Get weird. I promise. Ian! Ian, baby! I understand! Also, wait a minute. Is that an, is that an Undertale poster? I have no idea. It's just something I picked up on the side. That's all. It's... It's what? At this point, I can't help but peer into the box again. Scantily clad characters sit in provocative poses, cover to cover. There's not much left in there at this point, but that's at least a dozen. So that's a lot of poor. Oh, come on. I just told you. It's not porn. It, it's still softcore, Ian. Come on. Just own up to it. There's almost a crack to his voice, reminiscent of days past. Ian grabs the box off the bed and shoves the books in it promptly. The, the, these are mostly doujin sheep. Fan comics. You get them because you like the main series and... Are you sure about that? He looks at me, almost offended. It's definitely, it's definitely adult material. All right, so if it's not adult material, can I see more? I was still looking at those. What? No, I'm shelving these uh, and you can read them later. Once they're on the shelf, when I'm done, what do you mean when you're done? <laughs> what do you mean when you're done? Are you, are you still perusing them? <laughs> How do I know you aren't going to put them under your bed or something? It's not porn. Why would I put them under my bed? Oh, God. I don't know. Frick. Uh, wait, wait. What do you mean under my bed? What are you doing under my bed? L listen, listen, me and the monsters under your bed, we get along real fun, Ian. Like, you got you got to meet Jeremy or, like, Jimothy, okay? Jimothy down there. Like, he, he's an excellent chap, and my God, have you met Jeremy? Jeremy, he is, 
he is just an amazing, amazing person. Like, you've, you've got to meet them someday. Ah, that's my cue to leave. Hey! Don't just run away! Uh, uh, c come on! Don't be a jerk! I flee the scene of the crime, giggling like I'm a kid again. I'm being serious! You're not going under my bed, are you? No! I'm just gonna be in your bed! Th that's a violation of my privacy! You don't know what I keep down there! What do you keep down there? Do you have like a bunch of Tenga eggs? How do we tell him that was bluffing? I run into my room and immediately go to hide. Last place he'd look will be behind the door, so I make the hardest U-turn of my life and pull the door a as over me as possible. Ian follows after, but doesn't seem to pay any mind to me from my advantageous position. I may just be safe yet. Ha ha ha! Gotcha! No, I got you! Ian bulldozes me, coming in like freight train and plowing the two of us directly into the bed. A uh, giggling, laughing, flailing mess of people. I try and push him off, try and get my own leverage. I think he tries to choke hole, but I lick a long, wet stripe down his arm. Ah, gross! Th this ain't gonna be the only bodily fluids that's gonna be all over you, Ian! He sits back at a bed and dries his arms at a blanket and on his lap. What are you, f five? Well, no longer. I mean, frick, it's 26 now. Can't even make the joke. I only blow a raspberry at him and the two of us collapse in laughter. Chest heaving from the exchange. I let my hand find his and hold it gingerly. FYI, I've never been under your bed. I just know that's a cliche adult mag hiding spot for guys who still buy paper, well, adult material. Still not porn, but I prefer to support the creators. Making comics is hard and I'm a connoisseur of the arts, I'll have you know. Oh yeah, a total connoisseur, that's what you are. We both laugh again. He seems less upset about it all now. We lay in silence, staring at the ceiling for a sweet and calm moment. So for real, are we gonna talk about this? What's there to talk about? Part of me wonders if he's genuinely upset, but another half of me feels like he may have been hiding things from me. And if it's something like sexy maids and cat people, I can handle that. It feels like he needs to hide things from me. I don't want him to have to live like that. Look, I don't care what you do in your free time. So as long, so long as you're not seeing anyone else or something. <laughs> you know I'd never do that. I know. I'm talking about whatever kind of stuff you like. You don't have to hide it. He shifts uncomfortably next to me on the bed. And I squeeze his hand. I know. Deep down, I know. Can I be honest? He fidgets more. That stuff. It's... It's really not what you think it's for. What is it for? It sounds cliche as hell, but... I seriously read it just for the stories. Yeah, I get ya. You're the only person I can see like that. Just you. Other people are weird, and I, I don't know them. But I love you, and I love doing <laughs> things with you. I feel safe with you, and I know you think this is silly but I want to be able to make you feel as good as those guys in the books I only think about you he blushes and fidgets with his hands he really is just such a squirrely bundle of nervousness I wrap him in my arms and nuzzle into his torso I could hear his sharp inhale afterwards I felt the relaxing of his body as he slowly gets comfortable in the embrace I felt him melt into me. It's not like this is the first time I've done this with him. Growing up, we got so used to holding each other. Letting each other ride out the worst of whatever we were feeling. It was almost cute how he still needed me like this. But I'd also be lying if I said that I wasn't fond of this myself. 
You okay? Yeah. I I think I am. He shifts his weight, pressing against me. It's cozy against him, and I'd be content to stay like this forever. Until I feel something firm between our bodies. Is, is that a water blanket? Something left on the bed? Reach your hand out, I tried to readjust whatever that was. Must be his wallet, or... Ian? Jeez. <laughs> Ian yelps. Yeah, shoot, sorry. There's something in the sheets, I think. Let me see. I slide my open palm, hand down. Fill up the mask to see if I can make out what it is. It's fine, it's probably just a shirt or something. Here, shift over in. Ian sees, almost like a jolt of electricity to shut up his spine. No, I don't think there's anything there. You, you really should stop, though. Um, just in case. Ian, Ian, it'll only take a moment. I, I just need to grab it and rip it out of the sheets. Like, you don't have to worry about it, Ian. There's nothing to worry about. No, I swear to God, there's something here. Let, don't worry about it, Ian. Me and him squirm more in a bit. The sheets were so messed up at this point. Is it a wallet or something? Maybe he knew what it was. I've touched his wallet plenty of times and... Ian grips my shoulders tightly, whimpering softly into my ear. Ian? Ian, are you okay? I was trying to tell you... That's... Me. Oh! So do I need to put it back then? I, I already pulled it out. Hey. Are you okay? I... I didn't hurt you, did I? His gentle, albeit panic voice was calming. I reassured him with a smile while he cut my face in his hands. That's okay, I'm fine. Ian helps me clean up after. There's really not much of a mess, but he fusses about what he can. He seems much less tense than before, and they need to wonder why. I'm sorry. I, I wasn't too rough with you, was I? Not really. I didn't mind it. <laughs> That's good, then. I pat the bed and Ian follows like a puppy, snuggling up to me beneath the covers. He's shy about a lot of things, but affection isn't one of them at the moment. You know, the only person I want is you. Don't you? He kisses my forehead gently before nestling in for what will probably turn out to be a nap for the both of us. Just you and me. Forever. Right. Forever. You couldn't be happier. Well, that was a freaking lie. Okay, so right now we're gonna be going over some of the audio tapes which we've unlocked. So like, in order to get the Afterlife segment as well as the audio tracks, you're gonna need to like play through the entire game once. Uh, it doesn't matter like which route you go down, as long as you complete it at least once, you'll be able to unlock these. But anyway, uh, I would be narrating over these, like, it's literally just audio tracks, you will get some subtitles, so, so, hey, here we go. Hey. It's me again. I'm sorry. I know I shouldn't keep calling. You're probably busy or something. <laughs> it's probably really dumb of me to try and reach you at this point. Feel free to let me know if you want me to leave you alone, and I will. Just figured... You haven't said to stop. Maybe you're still listening. It'd be nice if you were. I really fucked things up, I know that. But I still care about you a lot. I want to make this work. I. Really, really don't want this to be what ruins everything. I just keep thinking, right? You remember when we went to that shitty Valentine's Day dance in school? God, we must have been like 15. I didn't think I'd ever get asked anything ever, and you changed all that. And then I just realized. I don't know how not to have you in my life. You're the only one that 
makes anything meaningful. Nobody's meant anything since. I need you. And I still just... <sighs> Shit. I... I kept my promise, if it helps any. I'm not seeing anyone. Focusing on studying and auditions to try and keep busy. I'm going to try and make this all worth it. Find some work and come home and then... I... I don't know. Call me back. Call me back. Please, just talk to me. I'll never do this again. I don't want to live like this without you. I'm not strong like you are. Honestly, saying, screw you, Ian, you left. Like, frick. You could have, like, left, like, like, more gracefully or anything. What the hell? But anyway, next tape. I think you care about them, don't you? You've convinced yourself that they need saving, that you can save them. It's too late, you know. They're already gone. Where I am, you could never reach. And every day that piece of me grows bigger and stronger. It's only a matter of time until we're one, truly and forever. I love them. And they love me. I'm not letting them go. Ever. <laughs> okay, was that Jack? I think so. I, I think that was probably Jack, like, prior to, like, meeting us or something. Or that's Jack meeting us. This is probably sometime in the future or the past. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where this audio track, like, takes place. But anyway, um, the blue tape now. All right, now, I'm assuming that, out of all of you listening today, some of you have to be parents, right? I'm sure quite a few of you have been tuned in to this new kids show, Big Hit, it's everywhere, it's, it's inescapable, really. I'm, of course, talking about the Sunny Time Crew show. Now, I have to admit, I don't really know what all the fuss is, but then again, I am 36, and if I did, I'd, I'd have bigger things to worry about. <laughs> but today, we are making an exception. We have with us one Mr. Sunny Day Jack, who I am to believe is the... the leader, the front guy, for the mass-acclaimed Sunny Time crew. How you doing, Jack? I'm great, Dan. Thanks for having me on the show. Glad to be here. I can tell. For the folks at home, you can't see this, but wow, this guy can smile. Look at that. Your dentist must be so proud. Oh, it's nothing a simple and consistent brushing routine can't do. But thank you. I do my best. Of course you do. Of course you do. Now, why don't you tell me a bit about yourself, hmm? Tell me about Jack. Well, I'm sure that, as you said, I'm part of the Sunny Time crew. I wouldn't say I'm a leader or anything. We all just kind of do our own things and, you know... We help the kids at home learn and talk about their feelings. There are a lot of ways to do that, and we run through them all with the kids, and, well, I mean, there's not too much to say about it. I think it's a very important job, and I, I like it. I get to come into so many homes and be there for so many young viewers, and sometimes they really need it, and sometimes they don't, but the company is nice to have around. Yeah. Right, right. If I've read up on this show correctly, you've all been burning hot and fast, haven't you? You know, what with all the toys and the lunchboxes and the, uh, what was it, an ice show? Oh, uh, we'll be doing a small live tour, nothing too big. We'll be doing some singing, some book readings, really interacting with our fans. It'll be a lot of fun. But if you want to know more, you can find out more information by calling in and... <laughs> right, right. So, if you don't mind me putting this out there, you're... Kind of a celebrity, aren't you? I guess you could say that, but really, we're all... Then we'll put you through the same ringer as the rest of them. You're a fine young man. Plenty strong, plenty... You know? And you're in there, right? Mom's home, you're taking care of the kids while she, you know, irons or cooks or whatever. Tell me, do you ever get fans who are moms? Well, 
sometimes you could say that. And they're really nice, just like the kids. I'd put money on you being the crush of at least half of the housewives across America who tune in. You could do that, you know. I guess I wouldn't really know. Anyways, I believe you're on the show today with a mission. Actually, yes, Dan. I just wanted to come on and let the parents know that this weekend, me and my friends will be at the feast of the... And you know, I'd love to meet and make as many new friends as possible. So, if you'd like to come down and say hi, we have balloons and games and activities. Well, uh, actually, we'll be doing pictures and book signings, too. We're a local show, and it means a lot to have these opportunities. I just think it's really great to be able to thank you all in person, as parents, your kids... We love teaching them and helping them grow. But when that TV turns off, it really is you who comes in and does the important work. Oh, isn't that sweet? Unfortunately, would you look at that, it seems like we're out of time. But before you go, though, I have to thank our sponsors and... One last question before we go, Jack. I'm asking on behalf of all the mothers out there. Ladies, thank me later. Are you sure you aren't holding out on us at all? Like, come on, a guy your size has to have come from modeling or something. I'm putting it out there. There's got to be a picture of this guy in somebody's charity calendar. I'm serious. Check your Mr. Jones, folks. Nobody gets this fit for themselves. All right. Thank you for having me, Dan. It was really nice to be here. Um, parents, we'll see you this weekend. Remember, that's at the mall east of the... I'm really looking forward to it, and you should be too. This is Sunny Day Jack signing off and wishing you a sunny time tastic day. Okay, so that's fascinating. This directly contradicts with what we actually like uh, assume from the game. Because like, here's the thing. Like in the game, we mentioned that, okay, we searched online and no one's talking about it. But this show, the Sunny Time crew was big enough to have a whole bunch of merch, a whole bunch of different road shows going on. And it's so strange that no one's talking about it right now. And I'm wondering what is the implication of this? Surely, surely someone has like a recording of the show or surely someone must know what happened to the Sunny Time crew. What happened to the show? But anyway, uh, on to the last tape. Hi there, Mr. Uh, Mr. Haberday. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Mr. Haberday, so nice to meet you. My name is Joseph, Joseph Kinley. I'm sure the director's told you a bit about me beforehand, but I'm the psych and development consultant for the show. Uh, well, they, they, they might have. Um, I don't really know that much about production. Uh, I just try and stay out of the way when I can. And that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. They don't pay you to fuss over those details, I imagine. <laughs> if only, right? <laughs> so, my job here is to help the writers make sure that, um, that we're sending the right messages out there. I make sure that the words you act out are mentally and psychologically nourishing for the children watching at home. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, you have a very important job as the face of our program. You're the candy coating for the broccoli of information that we're feeding them every day. You're comforting, you're kind, you're caring. They have to trust you and like you. Tell me, Mr. Haberday, um, have you ever considered having a child of your own? Um, well, well I, I guess, uh, maybe, someday, <laughs> if I can afford one. Yeah, probably, yeah. Someday, you might have your own, but the job you're going to be taking, the role you'll be playing, will be significant in the raising of children all over the nation. You're going to be their parent when their parents are away, their babysitter when the parents are busy. You're going to be their friend, their counselor, their brother, or maybe even their dad when they don't necessarily have one. Shit, I, I don't know if I can do all that. What, what if I mess up? That's why I'm here to help you. We're going to be putting you through a few psychology classes, some basic child care and handling classes, the whole works, really. Do you like children? Of course, but I know that, I mean, I, I, just, I don't want them to, you know, I don't want to put them in a bad position or... Judging by your, um, are, are those tattoos? E yeah, um, I, I can cover them up. Makeup told me that it was fine, though. They, they said it wouldn't be an issue. I was in high school, I didn't know any... I'm willing to bet that you had a very hard life growing up. For someone so young to be so defined in themselves and to lash out like that, making permanent adjustments to their bodies in order to stand out. You wanted attention, didn't you? You wanted to be seen and heard and felt and loved. 
I'm not here to judge. I might even be wrong. Um, but I want you to really think about why you want what's best for these children. That's going to be our starting point moving forward. You're going to be wiping a lot of faces, holding little hands, and giving lots of hugs over the next coming years. With any luck, of course. <laughs> uh, by the time we're finished, you're going to be better at it than most mothers in America. Got it, got it, got it. Um, but... How do you know I'll do it right? You want to know the truth? It's all in the psychology, Mr. Haberday. The child's mind isn't that hard a puzzle to figure out. Think of it like, um, like a secret code. It might seem like nonsense, but when you look at it in the right light, it all comes together and tells you everything that you need to know. If you love the kids enough, we'll take care of the rest. Just keep that motivation and the enthusiasm sincere. We can teach you how to de-escalate situations and teach you how to navigate them, but children aren't stupid, Mr. Aberday. They can tell when you're faking it. I'm sure you especially understand what it's like to say, have a parent or guardian tell you that they love you, right? But maybe even as young as, say, six, you could tell that they didn't really mean what they were saying. Huh. <sighs> okay. I am probably going to need more time to actually uh, process that one. But anyway, that was Something's Wrong with Sunny Day Jack. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want to play this for yourself, link to the game will be in the description below. I have cut out some of the adult portions of this. That's going up on my Patreon. And if you do want to watch, like, the previous version of this uh, playthrough, like, I've archived it. It's up for YouTube members. And y'all get, like, a cute emoji with that as well. I might be coming back with a theory video of this sometime in the future. I'm not sure when that's going to be dropping, but be sure to subscribe to see when that happens like there were so many things i missed out on my initial playthroughs that i will need some time to actually process and like put together a little script but anyway thank you all so much for watching i hope you all have a lovely rest of the day and as always i'll be seeing you in the next video this is lion signing off ciao